What up? What up, though? It's your boy Willie Styles. All right, getting this together. Waiting on one of my castmates to join. What up? It's whatever uh, podcast. How you doing tonight? Hope you enjoy our uh, little uh, live feature here tonight. We're gonna pick a little random topic and uh, discuss a couple of things. In the meantime, while we are waiting on them to join, um, just want to let y'all know y'all can always catch us every Thursday night, 10 p.m. on blogtalkradio.com slash GFT radio. Uh, we have a great show coming up in the next uh, uh, episode, I believe. Uh, well, actually, I, I, I guess I better say yet until uh until we officially post uh, the topic, but uh, yeah, we I, I know we always come up with something great, so y'all know we, we'll, we'll take care of y'all. Uh, so again, it's blogtalkradio.com slash GFT radio show. I always forget the show part. <laughs> y'all gotta excuse me. Um, so tonight we're gonna be having a nice little discussion. Um, as soon as I can get somebody on. Uh, let me see. And then uh, we'll get this get this kicked off. In the meantime, anything anybody want to talk about? Let's see. Uh, so we got anybody else in here? I guess their IG says they're letting everybody know that we uh, that we're broadcasting live. Uh, oh, as you can see, I got my new merchandise in. I don't know how this looks on camera, but it's my the thing is shirt. Just got that. This is uh, one of our GFT Radio Show. Uh, shirts and uh, we got some new shirts out there. We got the uh, Commander Cheeto shirt. We got the um, uh, uh, all skin folk and kin folk shirt. That's one of uh, Clint's saying. So make sure y'all cop that. Um, oh, here we go. Looks like Clint is about to join us right now. Are you there, Clint? Looks like he's joining now. All right. What up, Joe? Okay. What up, baby? How you oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. It's good with you. I see you. I see you talking about the merchandise. Oh, yeah. I got my little now, nah, man. Oh, yeah. You got your shirt on? Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, you got the hoodie. Yeah. That's what's up. You feel me? Rapping, rapping. Yeah, I had the, I had the uh, Zay's Minion uh, hoodie on. Uh, Friday, and then yesterday I wore my Commander Cheeto shirt. Been doing, been doing my repping. Yeah, I gotta get my Commander Cheeto. What up, Sonny? I, I I didn't see you until it was after I had already added Clint. It's too, it was you, you gotta gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Sonny. My battery about to die. So what up, Mister Glanton? Good with you, brother. B, what's up, baby? What's up, bro? Yeah, you know I man. Appreciate the support. Be always supportive. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So, uh, like I was telling the people, you know, we got a, a nice show lined up on Thursday, but tonight we're gonna have a nice little quick discussion. Um, you, what did, what did you want to discuss tonight, Clint? Uh, man, you want to you want to discuss? Uh, we could, we could go back to what we was talking about on the podcast. Uh. How we was finishing up uh, about the election, or because you know the election is Tuesday. Yes, the election is Tuesday. I don't know why I, I, that should have been the first thing I wanted to talk about. Because actually, yeah. I don't know if you've seen, and I've been loving this ad. So there's this ad going around right now. Um, I'm gonna say I've been seeing it on YouTube. No, it, it may not have been YouTube. It may have been on Hulu. But basically, it's a guy who's like telling you about. Uh, the fact that he knows you're not going to vote, right? And then he mentions how he's, uh, you know, unexperienced, how he has no clue what he's doing, but he's going to be your next local senator or local representative because you're not going to vote. He's like, I'm going to win with like 30 votes because nobody votes in the midterm. So we got to get out there and prove my man wrong. You know, he was talking. And the thing is, the the the, the truth of the matter is, and what he, was discuss what he was discussing in the ad is the fact that, you know, a lot of the local issues are governed by people who run during these midterms, 
who have, you know, they may either not have experience or they may have experience and they just don't know what the hell they're doing uh, or they just neglect their duties. And we end up with poisoned water, uh, you know, uh, uh, policies that don't benefit the community, uh, issues like school safety and school funds being misappropriated. You know, these are things that are decided at your midterm elections. And people got to take this more serious. And, you know, and I think that's the thing. And he also mentioned about people looking at that top of the ballot type of deal and not worrying about the rest of it. You got to, people, you got to, you got to pay attention to your local representatives. You got to pay attention to your local politics. You got to pay attention to your, your, your state and your local, uh, um, uh, what they call them, uh, the uh, proposals and amendments, you know. So you got to be, you got to be aware of that. Yeah, you definitely got to focus on everything. Read that bottom question. Sometimes there's two questions at the bottom of it. They want you to vote on it. You know what I mean? I know a lot of uh, a lot of states are doing their attorney general mm -hmm. uh, this this midterm. So make sure <clears throat> you vet who your attorney general is, and you know what I mean. Don't just go in there blindly right. voting because you want to know what. You know what I mean? What type of laws they're trying to enact. exactly tell them, tell them, tell them what the the importance of that attorney general is. Yeah, because they basically enforce the laws of the state. So you want to know what type of, you know what I mean, how they coming? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Or like what they're trying to push down your throat? You may not agree. It no matter what party you on, you could be a Republican, Democrat, Independent. You may not agree with their policies, the laws that they want to enact or, or, or enforce or amend or do you know, away how, with. How we enforce it. You know, that's the thing. We yeah. have a lot of laws exactly. that are on our books that people just don't either enforce or worry about until you get a new attorney general in and he takes you to take that more serious. You want to know their agenda. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because some of them, if you don't know their agenda, you just going in there blindly voting and, and not vetting it then they might not be serving your best interest. That's the key. You feel me? Everybody always talking about, you know what I mean, vote, uh, voting for along party lines. Vote for what's in your personal best interest. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Because then... And I, I believe the, the attorney generals aren't even partisan. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Exactly. You're right. You know what I mean? Usually, uh, I think ours... Ours actually, because New Jersey, we don't got a attorney general vote this this midterm. Right. But ours was right. picked by the governor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Ours was nominated for, uh, by the governor. I can't think of his name right. Uh, uh, our governor is Phil Murphy. But I can't think of the uh, attorney general's name uh, right off the top. But, you know, I, he, I, I like a lot of his policies, his agenda. You know what I mean? He's more about uh, domestic issues and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Trying to be tough on that, right. which I'm, which I'm totally cool with. So, you know, and, and I think he was doing with a uh, little bit of immigration with the uh, ICE and things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know: Did you set check uh, Cannon's class, Nick Cannon? He got this little thing he doing. <coughs> it's called Cannon's class. He actually had Angela Rye on there, who was a political pundit. She's a Democrat. Okay. She's very popular. Black. She was uh. She always be on the Breakfast Club and on CNN or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were discussing, they were having this discussion about voting, whether it's important or whether it's not. You know, Nick Cannon was coming from the uh, mindset of, you know, voting, you know, it's more of a facade. Mm -hmm. You know, Angela was coming from uh, the perspective of if, if you want to be able to start a revolution, which I agree with her here. You feel me? You have to be able, you want to change the system. You got to actually know the system that you're already in. Exactly. And that's the problem with a lot of us. We don't even know the system right. that we're in. So we really ain't even, a lot of us not even playing in the game. <laughs> right. You feel me? You got not even in the game. So you're trying to change something. You don't even know how to fight. Exactly. <laughs> you feel me? You don't even know what you're fighting or how to fight. And, and, and just, and just to, to touch on what you just said there, I think a lot of it is, is, is like you said, people don't understand what the, the processes are. They don't understand the policies that are out there. They don't understand how things yeah. work, right? Um, because in, in a way, in a very tiny way, you have to agree with Nick's perspective in certain aspects, only certain aspects. Mm -hmm. But it's a small part of it. 
you know, when we when we talk about local government, when we talk about school board, when we talk about um, your 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 city treasurers, your city clerks, um, the mayors, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff, it's it's decided by the people, the popular exactly. You know, so you have to keep in mind that there's there's that electoral college facade and fiasco that we live up under has only really has only to do with the president and the vice president exactly. and then um the the fact that they can appoint certain um uh positions you know then that that gets affected because like you know with the situation with the supreme court so you have a lot of that tied up in that but when it comes to a lot of your local government and even sometimes your senate because the thing is you're you're sitting in the house you you know your uh your um I forgot what you call it, the uh the congressional you know, a lot of that, that's yeah. that's all people, you know, popular vote base. So, you know, exactly. but the other thing, too, is looking at the, the, the amendments and the uh, proposals and the things of that nature, uh, the ordinances that get enacted. What a lot of people don't even realize is there's a lot of local ordinances and a lot, a lot of in, in these smaller cities. Like I live in a small city here in, in the outskirts of Detroit. Yeah. A lot of our ordinances aren't even decided by voting. It's decided by, like uh, a pa not a panel. What do you call it? It's like a public forum. You go to the a city forum. council. So to speak. I'm sorry. Like a city council. So exactly. Like 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 you go into a forum with the city council or with the town council, and they take the the re responses from the general public, and that's how they make their decisions. So they make the ultimate decision, of course. But the thing is, is that you have to go show up to these council meetings and to these town hall meetings and voice your opinion and voice your needs to that local government in order for them to understand what the local community wants out of these ordinances. So if you don't go or if you don't get, make sure your representation is there, you're going to you're going to throw it all away and you're going to allow them to make the decision for you. And it's that becomes your fault because you're not there to take to take a stand for your own, um, like you said, what you say, you, you know, your your best interest. Um, Their best interest. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize that they have to. I want, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, let uh, let Sunny jump in real quick. Oh, okay. If she, if she, I'm I'm gonna tag out. Let Sunny jump in. All right. What up, Stickman Five? Thanks for joining in, Mr. Glanton, Ray Banks. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? Hope you all enjoying the conversation. If, if y'all got comments, definitely throw your comments down there. You know, we want to hear what the, the people have to say about this. But like I said, you know, I think a lot of it is is people want, um, you know, they I mean, people don't realize what they have. Here we go. They don't realize that they have the right to to govern themselves, or they have the right to to move. I didn't, I, didn't realize, I didn't realize I had to I had to still accept the, the original request. My bad, my bad. You still do. I apologize. I'm in the middle of changing the butt. Uh oh. I got a toddler. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Mama oh, duty. I guess we're in the middle of doing duties. <laughs> doing mama duties. Yeah, you got me in the middle of mom crap, but um, I'm here now. I was listening to the conversation. I, I, did, I missed the tail end of it before Clint got off. So if you want to catch me up real quick. Yeah, no, we were just talking about um, the importance of local, um, paying attention to the local government, paying attention to uh, uh, what's happening with, you know, between local ordinances, state proposals, things of that nature, because the, the biggest thing was uh, that the conversation that 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 um, Nick Cannon and I think he said Angela Rye, they were that they were having was that Nick was saying you know there was a facade you know to the to the uh, uh, voting process and she was saying no you know it's important to vote and you know and I was saying you, there there is a fine line there you know there the, the Nick's point is valid only in the um, presidential race because you got the electoral college there in terms of the the, the um, Secretary, not Secretary of State. What do you call those people? The uh, uh, the cabinet. Uh, I guess that's Secretary of State, but you know the cabinet as well as the um, Supreme Court because they get to appoint all those people. But the thing is, is that you have your congressional, you have your local state uh, uh, house and senate, you have your mayors, 
your proposals, yeah. to, that's popular vote. So you have to take yeah. in that in, in order to make a change in that. Yeah, I think um, Obama said the best. I, I remember when he said he said them. Um, he said people get so hung up on the presidential election that they miss the fact that, and they always say, "How does voting for the president directly link to what's happening in my life?" Because the president is the president. I said he got more things to worry about than what's happening in our local areas. I think that people miss the fact that the local elections are extremely important. Um, I would say, and it might be fucked up to say, but I feel like. Voting in a local election is more important than the presidential election because mm -hmm. that that directly affects, like as you said earlier, your school districts, what's happening in your city, like all these things that we we get upset about, especially when it comes to our kids. Like and like I said, I go through it firsthand. I have a child who's special needs, so I'm I'm always trying to pop up at a board meeting, which I think I'm trying to go to one at the end of this month because of the situation of of special needs in in, in within my city. But I think that people lose sight on that. Like these people that are directly affecting your your local city matter way more than any president. Like, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't vote for president as well. You should do that as well. But you definitely need to vote in your local elections if, if you want to see real change within your community. Because if you're not voting in your community, you can't complain about community problems. And we say that about regular voting. You you complain. That people are always ready to complain and don't vote and say, oh, I'm not voting because my vote don't count. Local elections, your vote counts. 100%. So whether you realize that or not, this is why your city is still messed up. This is why, and like, I know within our city, people vote by popular po popularity. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they voted one of our mayors back then, Tony Mack. He was a criminal before he got voted. People say, oh, we like him. Like, he was mess shady at the beginning of his, his political career, even, be, even before, but people, everybody knew him, so they still voted him in. Like, that's and then, then when he gets locked up and sit there, like, oh, well, this is all that's happening. It been what's happening. You weren't paying attention. Now, I can't say to myself that I'm 100% knowledgeable before I walk into that voting booth. I, like, I know everything there is to know about every candidate. No, but you have to kind of like, like we talk about this on many shows, we talked about voting. You have to kind of do your own research, not get caught up in one of the, and a lot of these, you know, um, commercials that we see, you can't get caught up in that, that he said, she said, this person not doing this, blah, blah, blah. You have to find out what that person is doing that directly affects you or where their opinions lie with, within, uh, along, alongside your own and, and make your best decision from there. But it's, it's a lot of people. Like, I'm, I remember Clint said on past shows about how our voter turnout is horrible. Right. Like, it's horrible. And then you hear people complain. I I went to our, our um, school's board meeting um, in October. Was it in October? No, it was in it was in September. End of September. I didn't get to go to one in October, but the one in September. You have so many disgruntled employees that work for, the, for for our school district. You got so many teachers that's doing so much for our kids in the district, or at least attempting to. And then you hear these parents complain, complain, complain about the city, complain about these schools, and y'all not voting. How do, right. how do you? How do you expect anything to change if you're not helping out with the change? You can talk. I can go and, and go to these board meetings and, and shout at the board board members for every reason in the world about what's wrong with this school district. But if I'm not voting. Right. It don't make a difference. In, right? in, in, in my local election, how, how do I how do I expect anything to change? I can go yell at anybody. I can yell at somebody I don't like. I can go to McDonald's and yell at the cashier. It don't mean it's going to do nothing, you know? Exactly. And that's, and that's the biggest thing is that people don't, Think about the fact that a lot of these positions are uh, are decided in your midterm elections, in your primary. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not always you, you can't wait every four years in November to vote. You gotta you gotta do all you gotta do your due diligence. You gotta vote in these in these, in these midterms. You gotta vote in. And if people don't understand what a midterm election is, it's the time in that second year of the presidency when people are. Um, uh, Changing positions in the, you know, in, in the Senate and the House, um, a lot of governor, uh, gu what they call them, gubernatorial races. A lot of those happen mm -hmm. at this time. A lot of mayoral races happen at this time. Um, tons, tons, tons of proposals for state, uh, um, statewide laws get changed and and or or added at this time as well. Yes, yeah. and even yeah. the questions when you see on the ballots is you're not just voting for most of them, for the most part. Most of them have questions about what's happening. <laughs> like this, I um, I I think I actually have my ballot. I don't. Even, I'm not gonna get up and get it. But 
for the, I, I know the last previous election they had questions where you had to answer certain things about different taxes and stuff like that. Like that stuff affects us. Mm-hmm. You you have to pay attention. Like we just got our new administration for for New Jersey has been an interesting one. Um, it's, it's a democratic one across the board for the most part. Um, I had the, the 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 honor of meeting our new um, our new governor. He was very um, welcoming, very nice, very laid back person, and that's fine. You can get caught up in the fact that somebody's laid back, but you also can lose the fact that what what the hell are they doing? You know, um, this past uh, I think it was September we met his wife at our job. You know, they came to the jobs talking about different things. Um, even our new administrations in our within our buildings, all these are like new people in place under him. Like, what are there? Like, you you have to look at these things and then. Like, a, a, and it's a lot of state workers that don't vote in the state of New Jersey, which is weird to me because you once complained about the governors, which directly affect our jobs. We are state workers. Hello, we need to vote. Who you working for? <laughs> exactly. And what their policies are and, and this, like, what, what are they trying to do that's directly affecting us and our taxes and things like that? And it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of people miss that point. They, they don't they don't understand that there's a lot more to this than that presidential race that there's a lot more that's involved uh, uh, in this process uh, like Clint was saying you know a lot of people just don't understand the the process or ramifications of of uh, these races in, the, in the, and of this uh, hey Sadie uh, May in time you know so, <laughs> so the um the thing I was talking about was was the the commercial. I don't know if you've been seeing that commercial on YouTube and on Hulu. And no, stuff. I have not. And I I heard you say it, and I was like, that's amazing. But it's true. Yeah. It's true. Very true. It's, and you know, that's on the water thing. You know that that's that's near and dear to us right now. I was going to well, actually, I think y'all too. In, uh, in oh I yeah, I think yes, absolutely yes, it is. Our water is, mm-hmm. is so, has yes. always been crappy. So yeah, so you know, I mean, we don't we don't have that bad of water in the Detroit area, but in the in Flint and there's a few other little surrounding cities that are having a lot of trouble with their water situation, water quality, and it's like, dude, you know, it's like you got to keep that in mind when you when you electing these officials in there who are going to have control over the water, going to have control over your school system, who's going to have control. I mean, here. Where I stay at, I stay near the airport, which is the um, the DTW or the Metro Airport, and they, you know, they they make decisions on how the runways are set up and how the the noise levels are allowed, things like that. And you know, people have to go in there and, and voice their opinions or voice their concerns about those runway patterns or those uh, flight patterns, rather, to make sure that you, these airplanes ain't tearing your house up. I mean, it, it, it affects you. You got to think about that stuff. Yeah, I think I, I think, and I also think that once we vote these people in, hold them accountable for for that for the words that they say. Whatever rhetoric they 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 decide to spew out to us during the election process, and and like you know all those those hopes and dreams they they sell us while they're trying to uh, mm-hmm. be, be become whatever it is they're trying to be and within the community. We need to hold them accountable. So you said you were going to do X Y Z. You still have not done it. I know change does not happen. In, 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 in five days or, or the day you become mayor or, you know, governor or whatever. But there needs to be, like, and that's the thing, I, I um, especially with, 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 with that, that Trump does a lot. He tells you what he wants to do, but doesn't tell you how he plans on getting there. And if mm-hmm. he tells you how he plans on getting there, it doesn't make sense to anyone. So I think that people need to learn when you're, when, when you're campaigning, you need to make not only to shout out like random stuff or like a chant to get people going. How do you how do you plan on doing these things? Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Realistic, realistically, realistically speaking, not no. Let's just make some stuff up, make it sound good. Realistic goals on how you plan on getting from point A to point B. Your realistic plans. You know, you gotta yeah. you gotta have a, a plan of attack, a plan of. Uh, 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 a uh, uh, plan of action, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the thing. A lot of them, they're not about action. You know, a lot of them, yeah, they're, they're, they're making promises, and they have no idea or no way of, of of fulfilling those promises. And people get so caught up in those promises. I mean, look at Trump and his five billion dollar wall. You know, that so many people want so bad. You know, and it's like, do you realize 
how much effort, money, people, all these things are going to take to do something like that, on top of the fact that you're going to have so much opposition to it, it, it people don't think, you know, and it's like... We still, and it's like do, do we still believe Mexico paying for that wall? Because, I mean... Yeah, we yeah, <laughs> still think Mexico is going, going to chip in, even though Mexico is trying to send a bunch of people up there now. Like, uh, before the wall go up, we need y'all to get out. So, um, Oh, and speaking of, so let's, let's flip let's flip over. I know everybody done, done heard enough uh, vote talk. About, so, about the caravan? Caravan. So I, I, I was watching the, the, the Trevor Noah video they said you uh, shared with us. Yeah. That is such an on point. Like that. This is why I, I like him as a person. Like, and he's not from the U.S., but just to hear his opinion on how that, like, it 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 doesn't make sense. Like how mm-hmm. how this it, this shit is amazing. Like this is this is where we're at. Yeah, I mean, I I, I didn't I didn't realize so many people were sitting there thinking that this that the the people who are coming from the uh what is it not Honduras what what I forgot what country is it Venezuela whatever country it is that all these people coming are coming to to attack us or take our jobs or it's it's like it's so much wrapped up people get wrapped up in their emotions they get so wrapped up in their but then half the job they take are jobs that most Americans don't want. Like you're talking about, they they half of them work at local rest uh, fast food restaurants. They work doing gardening and stuff like that. Like as Reverend Noel pointed out, they being your damn nannies, they're cleaning your houses. Like you don't trust them, but they're coming. You allow them to come to your house, but you're not at home to mm-hmm. clean your house. Half of them people work, and it's not necessary. Some of them got good jobs. Some of them make their, their own their own companies, and it's and it's beautiful to see. Like. You look at it, anybody else, um, Chinese people can come over, Japanese people can come over and make their own business, Indian people make their own business. Like, so many people came and make their own business. Why is it? And like I said, and then on top of that, if, if they're trying to, if, they're, if their intent is to come, in, come into the United States legally. Right. What is the issue? Yes, they're coming in droves. Okay, that's fine. But they're trying to do it the legal way. They're not trying to, I mean, some may try to sneak in. But they're most of them are trying to come in legally. They're trying to go through this process. And that's the thing. Is that the thing? Is 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 they're not even here yet, and you're already pushing on pushing some stereotype upon them. You know, because between, he, it's fear. He, he's trying it, to drum up fear so people can be like, "Oh, well, they're taking our job. They're going to kill our people." Blah blah blah, and all this stupid ignorance. It's ignorant. Yeah, it's blatant I mean, ignorance. The thing is, is I think Trump. Is is trying to, you know, capitalize on this situation in a way where he can look like the hero for the people that he's pandering to, right? Because like I, I watched a video where he literally said he would open fire, he would order the army to open fire on these people. Yeah, I I, I saw that one too. And 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 that was the thing that these exactly uh, exactly stick man five exactly stick man five these they want jobs that most americans like my daughter don't want to work at mcdonald's but i bet you if they they get a job at mcdonald's they're gonna be there busting their ass and doing what they gotta gotta do they're making they're gonna make it happen but my thing is that the um the the like you said the fear-mongering that he likes to do that's what he's doing he's capitalizing on that and this this whole talk of opening fire on them i mean yeah the, the situation where they were throwing rocks, I don't know what happened there exactly, but there was some situation where they were throwing rocks at, at police officers or Mexican uh, mil- uh, military. But the thing is, is that they aren't coming here to throw rocks at us, for one. They also aren't coming I agree. here. That's true. They also aren't coming here to, uh, like you said, to just jump over the fences and, and try to rush in. They're trying their best to get here safely, and without being uh, sent back to their native country because of the, the situation in their country, the crime ridden, the poverty, all the other stuff, and, and and find some kind of prosperity here, just like everybody else. But like I mean, you, you know how the United States helps so many, so many, so many uh, countries. They help so many. Mm-hmm. If you see that, if you if you realistically, if you realistically don't want them coming to you, the U.S., right? Why not send people over there like 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 Trevor suggested, or just realistically, like it's we come over to help a lot of people. It's problems. Let's we go to Iraq and Afghanistan to 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 help them get democracy and get some get some shit together. Why why we can't go over and do that? Oil in Venezuela or Honduras? Sorry. <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> there's no oil in Honduras or Venezuela. Sorry. Yeah, but I, I know I get that too. But like, if 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 you don't, if you see a problem with them coming over and, and trying to come here, if you see if you see a trouble with them, all of them trying to come over here because they need they're they're in a crime written situation and they fear for their lives. Why not go help out? I get it that they're not they're they're not beneficial. They're 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 not beneficial to them to us. But yeah. Um, Clint, Clint want to jump back in, so I'm gonna let him jump back in. Okay. You got you got a request again, Clint. All right, I see you now. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, I I I feel like I feel like we can't let them all in. I, I I feel the same way that we can't let everybody in. That's just not feasible. But I just feel like it's it's not it's not undoable either, you know, that to let to let some people get in. Go ahead, Clint. What's your what's your what's your what's your uh, thing? I just I just want to play devil's advocate for a minute. <laughs> I know what you mean. Right? <laughs> yeah. First of all, you know, Sonny's saying we should go over there and help them. We can't even help ourselves over here. What up, Bill? Phil? Gotta, you know, what I mean, we got to stop uh, trying to send resources. Uh, outsource shit and we can't even handle home first you feel me how are we going to help them with their situation what makes you think they're going to care about their situation they don't even care about the minorities getting killed here True. you feel me True. True. so 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 you know what i mean we got to chill on always trying to you know what i mean oh it's our responsibility to go help people that's well, not really our responsibility you well, feel me? in my eyes my thing is my thing is they ain't going they, they wouldn't they wouldn't go we we talking about the caravan, uh, Phil. We talking about how how the caravan is coming and Trump is trying to shoot at them and to talk about how they yeah. coming to take our jobs. But the thing is, I don't think that I don't think that you know our government would send anybody to help them anyway. That's the thing. That that's number one. But number two is I think that if we if we truly want to be diplomatic about the situation, we can assist in keeping them on the other side of the border in in certain ways. Because in a heartbeat, the U.S. government will drop money on top of money on certain, on certain uh, uh, governments or certain countries, right? Yeah, usually in the benefit for their own future monetary gain. But the thing, yes, if, you're, if your fear is that you're going to have so many uh, people come over and you're so worried about the job situation, the overrun population, whatever the case may be. I mean, I think 5,000 people coming into Texas, either, I don't know if it's Texas or if it's California that they're headed to, but coming into one of those states, I, I, I understand. It can, be an, it, be, it can become a lopsided situation in terms of the jobless rate there because now you have to satisfy the jobless rate for those people. But when you start spreading those people out properly, that's not an issue. I'm, I'm sure not all of those people want to live in Texas. A probably bunch of them don't want to live in, 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 in California. You might as well stay in Mexico. So, I, I hear you. you know, I think I, I think there's two two or three different ways you can play this. But just out and out threatening to shoot people, out and out threatening to just, you know, arrest people, I, detain that them. rhetoric. That rhetoric, I, I, I agree. That's 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 unnecessary rhetoric. Mm -hmm. that, he, that he's spewing, but that's to satisfy his base, and we all know what Trump doing, just he'll say anything just to satisfy his base. Yes. My thing with this, my thing with them is, because you said earlier that all those people, and even, I, I watched the Trevor Noah clip that you sent, you feel me, and I ain't agree with everything he was saying either, because he was looking at it through a whole rose-colored eyes, now I mean, real sappy type of, sappy type of way, and you gotta look at it at a, as look at it in a realistic way as well. Some of those people coming over here aren't, are unsavory people. Everybody's coming in that caravan is not good people. Some of them trying to get over here to get a lick as well. You <laughs> feel me? <laughs> we know that. <laughs> but the, same, I mean? the same people who try to keep them out trying to get a lick too. <laughs> and, and my, my, that, but that's my point. <laughs> so at some point, at some point we have to draw a line as well. Right. You know what I mean? And, and my thing is, we keep trying to, we can't save everybody. If, if, if we, I understand people always want to go back to the uh, 
Statue of Liberty and stuff. Give me your wheat, give me your poor and all that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we poor okay, but enough. We poor here. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, take care of your poor here. Take care of home first. We have our own problems that we see on a day to day basis. We see how weak we are. Uh, we see the division. This is divided states of America. This is not the United States of America. This right. is the divided states of America. Take care of home first. I don't know uh, why everybody think this is just some, some – when they get here, they're going to soon realize that this isn't the luxurious place that is made out to be on TV. You feel me? Yeah. They're going to get hit with a rude awakening immediately. Right. <laughs> you feel me? Well, when they, not all it's cracked up to be. When they mentioned they were trying to leave crime-ridden areas, I was like, well, why are they coming here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We like – we hold – and 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 the, and the whole world like we we up there in the upper echelon of murders, <laughs> you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like we're not everything's not cracked up. Yeah, we're not perfect. We're not. You feel me? Yeah, My thing is, like, I feel for some it's of those people. Mm -mm. I feel for some of those people in those areas, but it's like, you know, what I mean, you know how they let's let's bring it on a lower scale. Mm -hmm. If you live in a nice neighborhood, this is what I always tell. If you live in a nice neighborhood, right? And you know, in that neighborhood over there, it's the, the crime level is crazy. Mm -hmm. You don't want everybody from that neighborhood moving to your neighborhood. You know, it's some good people in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You know for a fact. So yeah, but if all of them start coming, if all of them get up and start coming, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. All of y'all can't come because I already know what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. And all of y'all not innocent. <laughs> right. <laughs> all of y'all not innocent. A lot of y'all very complicit in what's going on over there. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a double-edged sword to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. It's a double-edged sword. It's a, it's, it, it, you know, it, there's caveats to it. You know, it, there's a good and a bad to it. You know, I mean, like you said, we feel bad about the, the, the situation, the poverty, uh, I mean, the crime, the crime is not really even just the crime level is the type of crime that they're experiencing. Exactly. Here. You know, we, 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 we see some of that here. But we don't see a lot of that here. You know, when, when, when you, when you have innocent people, innocent bystanders are at risk of being murdered, decapitated, mutilated, things of that nature, just because you were there in the, in the, in, in the, in the midst of the situation happening whatever the situation mm -hmm. would be, that's a problem. You know, that's that's a sad situation. We we don't we don't have a lot of that here. We see it sometimes. I mean Chicago unfortunately uh is, is in the media has been definitely painted in that in that light. I know Detroit has been as well. Um that you know things like that can happen to you. But you know for the most part we don't see that kind of thing in in I guess across the board type of situation here in the in the United States. But I think that people who um, have, you know, neighborhoods or jobs or situations where these people can fill a void. I think it's, I, I, I think it's, I think it's viable. Like I said, it can't, it can't be everybody. Right. Um, and, and I thought about this some years ago, forgot what it was. It was something to do with, I don't know if it was when ice kind of had started really like picking up about five, 10 years ago. And, and the thing was, is that, you know, I thought about it like, you know, we, we don't have unlimited resources either here, right? You know, exactly. we can't exactly. take everybody. You know, we can't, the whole the whole South America, we can't take everybody. And even if we try to say, well, what about if Canada helps out? It, it's still, there's limited resources, right? And there's limited space in terms of what's available when it comes to housing and uh, subsidies and things of that nature. And like you said, Clint, a lot of that is still going to the people here who actually are exactly. living here. So there's still limitations, you know, so it, there's gotta be a process and in, 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 in a, in a, in a limit to say, okay, you know, we can get 2000 of y'all in here or we can get, you know, whatever the case may be. Case may be but good. the thing is, is that I think people um, have to have to allow that process to, to, to vet out versus immediately jumping on this bandwagon that, you know, no, we're not letting nobody in and we're not doing this and we're not doing that. 
or the whole, you know, we're just going to start shooting at them, that kind of thing. It's like, why go to war with people who ain't warring with you? You know, this doesn't make sense. Um, I agree with you there. Why? why I want to is... cycle back. Mm -hmm. I want to cycle back to something Sonny mentioned okay. that I had an issue with. And, and I have an issue with a lot of, I, uh, Steve Harvey was saying this on his radio show too. It's like he was keep saying these people do jobs that no don't nobody else want to do. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely false. People will do them jobs just not for those wages. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So we have a stand. We have a standard here. Right. Right. And they know they're gonna have to pay us up the standard, up the par. Right. See when those when those uh people come over. They lower that standard because a lot of them are illegal, so they don't have to pay them as much. Right. You feel me? So they bring down the wage. You feel me? That's it. That's an issue. You feel so, me? That people. That's a, that's a true economic issue. Yeah. That's yeah, true. that's an economic issue that people overlook. So when, when, when people say, oh, won't nobody do those jobs? It's mm -hmm. like, hold on. You feel me? I, mm -hmm. I got a dude around, neighborhood guy around my way. You feel me? Young boy out here every day doing the landscaping so don't tell me that it's it's not people and you get paid money <laughs> you feel me don't tell me they won't do them jobs they will definitely do those jobs they just not about to do them for them wages you feel mm -hmm. me and when they come over here we we they they, they like you said it's an economic issue mm -hmm. you feel me they bring down that they bring down the wages and so then now it's like man i'm not about to do that job how much y'all paying them <laughs> right. like, oh no! <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, 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 there was a, a a comment that Trevor Noah made about the the people take. Like when he said that they were taking care of the kids, right? He's like, yeah, you know, oh, you let them come take care of your kids. The thing is, is that the way that they pay them to take care of their kids, they come in and and they live with you, right? So one, you consider that part of their payment. <laughs> you live with yeah. most most of us ain't trying to live with nobody. Exactly. <laughs> Number one. I mean, I when even when I was a teenager, I did some babysitting in my day. I wasn't living with them people though. I wasn't trying to. Two is like you said, the the payment. You know, they they're not getting. I think it was. I, I think I was making somewhere between t like ten or twelve dollars a kid per hour. So it was some ridiculous amount of money. It was good money, you know. Mm -hmm. But. They don't pay on people like that. They pay them like three dollars an hour or five dollars an hour, some stupid stuff like that, you know. And you get a, a, a family with two or three kids and little bad little kids. <laughs> You're not about to want to do that for no three dollars an hour, five dollars an hour, on, on top of being told, oh, well, since you stay here, you know, part of this money is is coming out of your rent. <laughs> like what? Like no, no, nobody, nobody's falling for them games, you know. And I think. That, like you said, in, in the situation with the the landscaping situation, there I, I know I know. If, I mean, I'm a landscaper. It's a black guy, you know, and and I don't pay him, you know, five bucks or ten bucks to to do my lawn. I pay him like thirty five dollars to come cut my lawn. And I don't even got that much lawn, so exactly. like you know. But when I want my stuff done right, I know I got to go to the, you know to to the people and get it done right. You know, I mean, there's there's even. Because companies now owned by Latin Americans or former Mexicans, things like that, and they're not taking on prices anymore. So yep. you know that's the thing that yeah, there, there's there's an economic issue if you have somebody come over who's willing to do. I mean, it's it's, it's the same issue with neighborhood of mechanics, right? You, if you if you have two or three mechanic shops in your neighborhood or in your in your little you know section of your neighborhood in the city, you um mm -hmm. you go and drop. I'll I'll grab her back. Um, okay. You know, if you have, you know, two or three of those mechanic shops and then, but you got a neighborhood uh, a mechanic out there, that he's going to, uh, he's going to cause a shift in the economics for the, um, he's going to cause a shift in the economics for, for getting uh, auto repairs done. He's going to cause a, a mismatch or not a mismatch. I forgot what you call it, but basically the supply and demand for for uh, um, for mechanic work or for for auto repair work, as well as the pricing, <laughs> you know, because we're expecting to be able to pay a certain amount because the neighborhood guy charges this amount. Now you got, you know, this this mom and pop, 
mechanic shop open up and they want sixty five dollars an hour. If you're not willing to pay that, you're gonna throw you're gonna throw off the economics for them because you're gonna say, okay, you know what? I'll pay them to do this major major work, but all this minor work, I'm gonna go to the neighborhood guy who's gonna charge me twenty bucks to, to to change my brakes, you know, five bucks to change my oil, stuff like that. And so you're putting those people out of business. So it changes the, the dynamics of the, the financial, the economic uh, of picture in that neighborhood. Yeah, but to kind of go off what um, Clint said about, yeah, I, I agree. It might not be an entirely true statement about um, them taking jobs that we don't want. But it's, it just, like for, for the jobs where like you had to live in nannies and blah, 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 those types of things. I feel like it's, it's, it's a sense of you taking advantage of someone in a situation that can't really, they, 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 so they have to accept that because they can't, they can't get more or what they should get for uh, doing, doing these jobs that regular Americans would have and get paid, you know, the standard minimum wage and blah, blah, blah. Um, I just feel like it's, it's basically all you're doing is taking advantage of somebody in a messed up situation. And if they're offering you the same quality you would get, from an American, why why should they be paid any difference? That's just me. I'm, I'm but, but, I, but I do get but I but, but I do get what he's saying, and I also do get that we can't help everybody. But as as, as to kind of link off the go off of what you said, you can't um you can't um you, you can't just go threatening to shoot and kill people. <laughs> so I mean that's just not American. That doesn't make America great again. So um. Anybody that believes that should it's just it just shows you that type of sad world we live in that believes that that's the best way to go about things. Um, but yeah, I just feel like most of the most of the time I go to these places that employ people that are, are undocumented um, or Ill illegal, they get the short end of the stick. And is it fair? No. No, but it's it's, it's a reality because they, 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 they what are they gonna do? argue with the government that they snuck into. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, like they most of them take those those mm -hmm. those one day jobs and stuff like that. So you gotta like at least they're not coming here for the most part and living off the welfare system where we're basically paying taxes to take care of them because they snuck in here illegally and now they trying to get citizenship and now they're on welfare and things like that. So mm -hmm. I will respect them more if they got a job, no matter how little it paid versus being on welfare and just sitting around doing nothing or not trying to do something like a lot of Americans do. Not not all, but I'm sure we know some Americans that I know quite a few as a as a former recipient of the, the EBT card, which I wish I had now, because I just went shopping and spent $200 and I almost cried about it. Mm -hmm. But as a former recipient of the EBT fan family, first act, uh, whatever, I know a lot of people that look just like me and otherwise, that enjoyed that little bit of change. Huh? I said, I know a lot of people are the other persuasion. Yes. They're the ones. No, they're the ones. A, a lot of them do, and they don't want to do shit with themselves. And that's sad. That's the majority of the ones get it. So. Yeah, and that's and that's it's sad. I mean, you, you got to use the system to get off the system. You can't stay on the system like you motherfuckers made careers out of that shit. Y'all been on that shit since we was kids. Your mama been on it since I was a kid. You got on it as an adult, and, and we about, I'm 35, I know you older than me, and you still on it? You just ain't, you just ain't want to do nothing with yourself? Um, I, I find that, I find an issue with that, but I mean, let me stop being petty. So I want to flip one more time before we get off tonight. Um, so I just saw a video from, what's my, what's my man named, Ryan Davis? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He, so he, he did a video, uh, I don't know if you saw the one about Iggy Azalea. No, I didn't. Oh, which one are you talking about? I saw the one that you sent us about the the the, the little girl that wanted to be um the, 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 that wanted to be black. Oh, oh no, that, that was white. I saw that one. That's the one you said because I don't follow him, but I think I need to. Yeah. No. So so. Yes, so they he, do do that as well, Clint. They 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 do it as well too. Is is like I said, it's not. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say all of them do, but it's a, quite a few that do it too. I agree. So, so Ryan just did a, a video uh, about an hour ago, maybe two hours ago, and about Ig Iggy Azalea. So I guess apparently somebody's offered Iggy 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 Iggy
if y'all don't know who she is, she's the the big butt white girl that does the the fancy. Well, he said a fancy song. I I never heard of fancy, but the uh, now I'm so fancy. Yeah, oh, and she was well, on Fifty Shades of Grey for those for those who watched it. Yeah, so so she's the one. She's she's, she's been you know genetically enhanced, uh, um, and and she's uh from Australia, I believe. So anyway. So she's been offered uh, <laughs> a porno from Bang Brothers. So Bang oh, Brothers wow. wants her to, to do a Bang Brothers video, or I don't know if they want her to do a series or whatever, but they want her to do a video. And so she's like offended or something, right? So which, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess you know, if, you, if you're not into that kind of thing, you would be offended if you were offered that. Uh, or you just, you know, just that kind of person. You're like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, regardless if I'm into it or not, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm offended that you think I would do a video, whatever the case may be. You know, no I'm offense. How much they was paying? But you said what? That's how much they was paying? <laughs> right. So um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't have to shake for that. I'm joking. I'm joking. So, I am. <laughs> so, so you know, he he was. So in this video, you know, of course he wanted to be funny. So in his video, he was he was saying how he didn't think he his the way he was saying versus what he was showing. He's like he's like you don't think that you know they should have approached her about it because you know what 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 about the things that she says or does has to do with with, with you know wanting to be in porn or wanting to be you know displayed out there like that. So on the side, he had a picture of her that she recently posted. Of herself uh, in nothing but panties and a t-shirt, playing with a Hello Kitty doll or something, and, mm -hmm. and then he had another picture of her fully nude that she posted on Instagram. You know, a side profile, fully nude, uh, is bending down like uh, kind of um, uh, what's my girl name, uh, K Michelle style, and mm -hmm. um, so he's like, you know. He's like, he's like, what, what, what about this picture says I want to do porn? So, you know, so he was, you know, of course he was trying to be funny and whatnot, but you know, I think that that does beg the question is, is what you, what you put out or what you produce for your content, what does that say about either you or your message or your, or your, um, the direction that you're trying to take your brand in, right? You know, does a, a nude photo of yourself say that you want to be objectified or or what you you know because what you would consider objectified some porn mm -hmm. stars don't feel objectified so let's, let's clear that up but you know do you does it say that you want to be objectified or does it say that you want to be offered porn rules and things of that nature what does that really say when you post half naked or fully naked pictures on instagram and facebook and things of that nature I, as from a female perspective, um, if you're posting half new pictures of yourself or new pictures of yourself, you have to like we always say, take the good with the bad. You have to understand that the, no matter your thought process of doing so, whether you wanted to do it because you wanted to express yourself and feel like this is your body, you could do whatever you want with it. You could express yourself how you want to express yourself, whether that was being nude, halfway nude, whatever. You have to take the good with the bad. So you 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 you, you can't not understand why somebody would take it in a in a sexual nature you're you're doing stuff like you you when you when you post pictures of yourself like if i which i mean most people if you, listen if you follow my ig you know that i'm just all over the place i post whatever i want and i understand that what i post can people can take it and perceive me as whatever they perceive me as by that one post or the many posts that i post but you, you, and you, you can't be ignorant to the fact that somebody may take it in a sexual nature. Sometimes it may be in a sexual nature and you just want to feel cute that day or feel, make, you know, get a lot of likes and be like, bitch, I know, yeah. Or maybe you got, maybe you worked out and you got a great body, you want to show it off. Y'all men do it. Y'all come out shirtless and show all y'all stuff, you know. Like y'all do stuff. Y'all don't have to necessarily be new, but you take your shirt off and you got some nice chest. Somebody might be like, hey, um, okay, we might pay a little bit more attention. You might get a whole lot of likes that day. Versus you posting a picture of yourself randomly just doing whatever. So you have to you have not to not beard. be ignorant to the fact. No, yeah, like like y'all like y'all and y'all beards. Y'all y'all be dead serious about that order or the great sweatpants post. Y'all not slick. Y'all not slick with them great let me tell you something. 
I, I made a post on IG about it. Y'all better go check my IG and see what I post about that. I, I'm, I'm paying attention. I am alert and conscious. Um, but y'all do it. And so when you post pictures like that, you got to understand that somebody might look at it in a sexual nature and you can't be offended by it. Or if you, you, or you, not, not that you can't, you shouldn't be. You should not be surprised. Somebody's going to be like, oh, that's tastefully done. That's great. And somebody's going to be like, damn, bitch, look at that ass. Or, you know, you, it can happen. What are you doing? And you, and you know, and you know what was crazy to me about the two pictures? The difference between the two pictures was the fact that the new picture was more tasteful than the other picture. That was the crazy part to me. So, you know, I, I, I definitely agree with you that I think that, you know, people can represent themselves in a way that garners negative attention, right? Either mm -hmm. either negative in terms of being propositioned or, 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 or called out and things of that nature, or negative in, in, in the aspect of um, just being told that you can't do what you want to do, even though you can Right, you know, it's like it's my thing. You can do what you want to do. If you do it, just understand it's it's every it's the all types. You're gonna get either a good reaction or a bad reaction. You have to accept both of them. I mean, I like the bad reaction, but yeah, I mean, like like my sister, she she my little sister, she had posted a picture of herself and she, for her birthday. She's she's over twenty five, uh, or about to, or just turned twenty five, and she was um uh, out partying. And the clothes that she had on, she, you know, she was feeling sexy. She was feeling, you know, uh, cute and all that kind of stuff. So she posted the picture. And her older sister was like, you know, get that off of Facebook. <laughs> get that off of Instagram, blah, blah, blah. You know, she she took it negatively. Her friends, on the other hand, were like, oh, girl, kill them, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, like you said, you have you have some people going to look at it one way, some people going to look at it different, right? And it's, 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 it's you, you know, you, like you said, you have to be strong enough to take the good with the bad, or you have to be confident enough in yourself to be able to deal with the, with the negative and, and be able to react properly to it because you know it's going to come. You know, people are exactly. going to you know, take their own, have their own take on things. You know, you don't have to accept what people say, you don't have to accept what people, can, you know, that's why we don't have a block button. <laughs> You know, don't have to. Uh, I mean, it, and this is this is the thing I, I've encountered with friend. You know, certain types of friends, certain types of family members or associates, uh, as you want to call them, is that you know they'll have their opinions, and it's like, look, I don't have to listen to your opinions. I, I pay rent here. I pay the note here. I pay whatever. You know, I pay the, the utilities. I, you know, I'm the one that has to take care of me and my family or whatever. So whatever you're talking about is nothing. Has no bearing on the choices and decisions I make. If it's my yeah, I get people all the time coming about my uh regular <laughs> Facebook post or be it an Instagram post. Why you post that? Because I'm grown. Exactly. Um, I'm grown well, as hell. I live by myself. I take care of my household. My bills are paid. I'm asking you for shit. So if I, yeah. I want to post today that I'm I'm horny, guess what? I posted that shit. Yeah. Like if I want to post, fuck everybody. Right. I'm grown as hell. So um, I, I get it a lot. But I don't. I could put that I'm. I actually got, somebody actually called me and told me that I post too much of my personal life on Facebook, and I laughed. Because um, if anybody follows me on Facebook, they know that I post a lot on Facebook. But there's, I post what I want to post on Facebook. And it's also to the fact that if you really know me, all my life is not on Facebook. Right. So I, I found it funny that they were telling me that, and, I, and I, I laughed, and I was like, oh, well, you need to tell your problem to Jesus. I'm like, that's great advice. That's great. But like you, if you if you really know me, like you should know me, you should know that that's not that that's not like that's not even a half of it. Yeah, I post about work. I post about my kids. You know, the most the most realest post that I ever posted about is going on about my son and stuff like that, and then, you know about my mom and people that I know that I loved in the past. But like as far as personal life, I could date somebody for a whole freaking year. You want? Did you, did you ever see this? I dated a guy for two years. Did you ever see a picture of him on Facebook? Not never. Right. Not never. Like it says, certain things are private. But for you to tell me and yeah, about what I post is crazy. Right. Oh man. IG said we we done. They 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 counting us down. We got twenty two seconds. Well make sure y'all yeah. check us out ten PM every Thursday. Um <laughs> but every Thursday, ten PM, blogtalkradio.com slash GFT radio show. I'm Willie Styles, Sonny. I'm Sunny. And, and Clint, Clint was on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.